They said that uh, a soldier, a policeman, whoever it was, stood and watched over their shoulder as they wrote this down to make sure they didn't tear any parts off of it. The parchment was old and brittle. And uh, so, but anyway, that, that's, that's another something to, to give you an idea of where this came from, what I'm trying to do. Okay, Jonathan to the masters of Israel, servant of the true God. In obedience to your order, I met with two men who said they were shepherds. This is about the shepherds who went in search of Jesus. And were watching their flocks near Bethlehem. They told me that while attending to their sheep, the night being cold and chilly, so I don't know what, whether their winter is the same as ours or not, so it, if it is, it could be close to the time we celebrate. Some of them had made fires and to, to warm themselves, and some of them had laid down and were asleep, that they were awakened now, can you imagine if you laid down going to sleep and something wakes you up? <laughs> by, the, by those who were <coughs> keeping watch with a question, what does all this mean? Something is going on unusual. Behold how light it is that when they were aroused, it was light as day, but they knew it was not daylight, for it was only the third watch. That's how they did time back then. Third watch. All at once, the air seemed to be filled with human forces saying, Glory, glory, glory to the Most High God, and happy are you, Bethlehem, for God has fulfilled his promise to the fathers. For in thy chambers is born the king that shall rule in righteousness. Their shouting would rise up in the heavens and then would sink down in a mellow strain and roll along at the foot of the mountains and die away in the most soft and musical manner they had ever heard. Then it would rise again high up in the heavens in the very vaults of the sky, and descend in sweet and melodious strains 
so that they could not refrain from shouting and weeping at the same time. <laughs> now, this is the kind of situation that aroused those shepherds to want to go find baby Jesus. Yes. Just to take him all the time to read all that, I got one more little uh, thing here that I have told you something about this. And uh, this is uh, chapter 7. Report of Caiaphas. How many of you know Caiaphas was the acting high priest of Jerusalem when Jesus was on earth? And it was Caiaphas who actually ordered Jesus crucified. Now, this report of Caiaphas to the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin was like the 70 ruling in Israel. It would be like our Senate and Congress all put together. And uh, so Caiaphas is having to write. And this is all on record in the archives in Rome. So, this is called the unabridged edition, which means that it's just as they wrote it, as they copied it off of the art parsons. After having made the preceding records of Caiaphas on unwinding the same scroll, we found another report from him. It may be interesting to read, to know what we mean by a scroll. That was the, uh, the report of Caiaphas is written in what is known as the square Hebrew. The letters are from a inch, half inch to <coughs> an inch in size. Now, This is a continuation of Caiaphas to the Sanhedrin. To you, masters of Israel, and I have made a formal defense to you and have approved the same. A few days after the execution of Jesus of Nazareth, the report of his <coughs> resurrection from the dead became so common I don't know if it's in this book or if it's just a record of history. But they told the soldiers, whatever you do, when people ask you what happened, you tell them that the disciples came and stole Jesus away. Now that's what was supposed to be the record. But listen at what the, at how he, a few days after the execution of Jesus was announced, the report of his resurrection from the dead became so common that I found it necessary to investigate because the excitement was more intense than before and my own life as well as that of Pilate was in danger. I sent for Malchus, the captain of the Royal City Guard, who informed me he knew nothing personal as he had placed somebody else in guard. But from what he could hear from the soldier, what he could learn from the soldiers, the scene was awe-inspiring. It was when Jesus came out of that grave it was such an awe-inspiring This is not his disciples talking. This is the people who cried, crucify him, a few days later, yeah. before this, I should say. And the report was so generally believed that it was useless to deny it. <coughs> In other words, we tried, but it was useless. He was no human being 
for the light and the angels and the dead that came out of their graves all went to prove. Do you remember reading in the Bible about the dead coming out of their graves and walking the streets of Jerusalem? It's Matthew chapter 27, if you want to read it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all went to prove that something had happened that never occurred on earth before. This is what his enemies are saying about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, of course, I can't read all of this, but uh, I am uh, skipping through again some. Uh, matter of fact, for time's sake, I want to read the very last part. Now this, this whole chapter is Caiaphas writing to the Sanhedrin. So there's about 20 pages there and I don't think you want me to read all of that. But here's the part that I've talked to you about. I locked my door and saw the guards and gave the guards order to let no one in without first giving me notice. While thou while thus engaged with no one in the room but my wife and Ananias, her father, when I left, when I lifted up my eyes, behold, Jesus of Nazareth stood before me. My breath stopped. This is Caiaphas talking, the one who cried, crucify. My blood ran cold. And I was in the act of falling when he spoke and said, Be not afraid, it is I. You condemn me that you might go free. In other words, Jesus knew that somebody had to condemn him, that he had to be condemned, he had to die for the sins of the world and be resurrected. And, and so, can you imagine the love that Jesus had. When he said, love your enemies, it wasn't something he hadn't done. He did it too. This is the work of my Father. For only, your only wrong is you have a wicked heart. This you must repent of. Jesus is still talking to Caiaphas. This last lamb you have slain is the one that was appointed before the foundation. This sacrifice is made for all men. Your other lambs were for those who offered them. This is for all. This is the last. It is for you if you will accept it. I died that you and all mankind might be saved. At this he looked at me with such melting tenderness that it seemed to me I was nothing but tears. Wow. This is the writing of people that were not Christians, that were not disciples, that were. And my strength was all gone. I fell on my face at his feet as one that was dead. When Ananias lifted me up, Jesus was gone, and the door was locked. No one could tell when or where he went. So, noble masters, I do not feel that I can officiate as priest anymore. God, this is how to change his heart. Just meeting him, and he's had to change his heart. If this strange personage is from God and should prove to be the Savior we have, looked for so long, and I have been the means of crucifying him. I have no further offering to make for sin, but I will wait and see how these things will develop. I have no more offering for sin. Wow. Praise God. 
put this right over here because I only have this one little Bible over here. I got enough to fill it up. All right. So, the book of St. Luke, chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. I want to share with you a little while this morning that Jesus came to deliver us from Satan's evil. I want to talk to you a little bit about delivering. I don't know why it is, but God seems to put me on things like that seem like nobody else seems to preach. But the word iniquity, for instance. I was reading the verse where it said, Depart from me, you that work iniquity. And when I read that, all of a sudden something happened to me, and I said, what in the world? Well, I've got to find out what iniquities are. And when I found out what iniquities was, I'm going to tell you, I'm sure glad he didn't say, depart from me, you that have iniquities, because that leaves leave most all of us out. <clears throat> but he said, depart from me, you that work. You that let those iniquities work in your life. I never knew you. So, I'm going to share an element this morning that's kind of, uh, you probably don't hear this preached a whole lot, but Luke chapter 4 verse 18, and I'm preaching on Jesus came to deliver us from Satan's evils. There is a deliverance, there is a difference between being forgiven and being delivered. Everybody listen, say amen. 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 I've talked so much, I'm put y'all to sleep, hadn't <clears throat> There is a difference between being forgiven, Jesus being our Savior, and forgiveness of our sin, and of being our deliverer. Yes. And delivering us. Let me read this right here, and I'm going to share some Old Testament situations of what I'm talking about. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind. I mean, if you know, there are some people that are captive. I have to watch my stuff up here. It'll be in the floor. Let me read that one more time. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So he's a healer. And to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind. Hmm. Preach deliverance to the captive. Now, when you talk about captive, we always think about sinners. <clears throat> you know, the Bible talks about a time when whom Satan takes captive at his will. And uh, I'm trying to think exactly how that's worded there, but it's, it's, it's about a church person as to how dedicated they are in that kind of situation, I don't know. But whom Satan takes captive at his will. I am convinced this morning that there are people that sometimes are in church for a long time, and Satan comes and takes captive of them. You say, oh, it can not happen to a Christian preacher. Well, let's see. What about a prophet? Could it happen to a prophet? Jonah 
Samuel was a prophet, was he not? God said to this prophet, I want you to go to Nineveh and I want you to tell those people three days and I'm going to destroy this place because of your sin. Jonah didn't obey God and he got himself in a mess. <coughs> you remember that, don't you? Yeah. Why did he get himself in a mess? Because he did not obey God, but he did obey what he chose to do instead. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He wanted to go fishing instead. But how many of you know Jonah wound up in a situation where he had to be delivered. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. If God had not come to Jonah's sea on, on the sea for Jonah, to his rescue and delivered Jonah, he was a gone man. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, Lord, yes. Was Jonah a bad sinner? No. What did he do? He disobeyed the will of God. He knew what God said to do. Yeah. He didn't. How many times have we been guilty of smaller maybe things when God has said, I want you to praise the Lord. I want you to lift your hands and pray. I want you to get out and walk around. Or I want you to go pray for somebody. And, and we say, oh, Lord, send somebody else. Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah. God is merciful. Yes, he is. There was a man by the name of Daniel. Was he a sinner? Nobody found himself in a place where God had to deliver. The king said, we we'll put him in a lion's den. Because Daniel wouldn't do. It wasn't the king that was the problem. It was the king's men that put the word that, that taught the king into doing what he did. But, Still yet, Daniel still wound up having to be delivered. Yes, he did. Yeah. Now, I'm not being, talking about being delivered from alcohol or delivered from smoking. That's not what I'm talking about. But people have to be delivered from those things, too. Yes. yes. You take a person that has been drinking and it has become a part of them, they must be delivered. Yes, they must. They can't just be saved. They've got to be delivered. Yes, amen. Daniel was saved, if you want to call it that. He was a man of God. And yet the king threw him in that lion's pen. He said, can your God, can not your God deliver you? The next morning when the king came down, he said, oh, Daniel. Because the king loved Daniel. He knew he was a good man. Oh, Daniel. Can your God, did your God deliver you? Is he able? Daniel said, my God is able. Yes. Yes. Okay. He's forever okay to deliver me. He yes. has delivered me. Yes. There is a difference between being saved, being forgiven, and being delivered. Jesus, in verse 18 of Luke chapter 4, said, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives. How can it happen to a Christian disobeying God? Let me tell you one more, and then we'll get back to the New Testament. There's a prophet by the name of Balaam. Do you remember Balaam? King Balak sent work down to Balaam and said, Hey! The children of Israel were passing through his land. Send them, send, send, send a prophet over here. I want him to curse this people for me. And tell him, I'll make it worth his money. I'll make it worth his time. I'll lay it on him. Balaam liked that idea, evidently. That was part of his problems. Let me tell you something. The devil knows your weakness. He knows my weakness. Oh, yeah. 
He knows exactly where to push the button, where to touch us. He knows. He knows. He doesn't know everything. But there's a lot he knows about us because of what we do and what we say. Amen. Oh, I just can't stand that. Well, you said it. Amen. The devil knows it now. Uh, yeah. And if you can't stand it, then the devil's going to see if he can get somebody to rub it in your face. <laughs> Why, I'll knock your block. Yeah. I need for salvation too. Right. Devil, do you want to pull on Balaam money? He evidently had been thinking about it and talking about it. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But God said, He was a praying man. He prayed to God, What should I do? And God said, Don't go unless I tell you. Next morning they came back. He saddled up his donkey. He got ready and took off. I mean, that's the, the, I, the second time the king has done made it really worthwhile for him to try this one. If he could just try it. Even though God has said those people are blessed, they're not cursed. But Balaam's going to try it anyway. He's going to try to see. I mean, if someone offered you a billion dollars, would you try? Because that's about what the king offered. It'd be about like a million dollars, or maybe more than that. And so here Balaam is. He's he got that nineteen. No, was two thousand thirteen now? Two thousand fourteen. He got that thing all shined up, and cranked up, and, <coughs> and, and, and ready to go down the road. He goes. And all of a sudden, his automobile, which was a donkey, went crazy. That old rocket's going down the road, just going fine, man. He's going to pick up that million dollars. Whew, wouldn't you be happy if you was going to pick up a million dollars? He's all excited, going to go pick up that million dollars. And about that time, that donkey <coughs> ran I guess run through run two rocks and he ran against one of those <coughs> sideways against one of those rocks mashed Balaam's leg oh wouldn't that want to make you want to really not lose your salvation over somebody doing something like that to you and you on such an important mission as that well, he had a few choice words to say to that donkey. If I, I took this sword, I'd... And about that time, the donkey saw uh -huh. the angel of the Lord with a sword drawn, and he stopped. Uh -huh. Dead still. Wouldn't go any further. Then God opened Balaam's eyes and let Balaam see the donkey or the angel standing with a sword drawn ready to hew Balaam. He didn't need to be saved. He needed to be delivered. Matter of fact, let me tell you something about what I'm going on but. Let me tell you something about Balaam. Balaam never did get over it. Oh, yes, he went. God said, you go. But when you go, you say only what I tell you to say. Right. Now, he's done got Balaam's attention now. Uh -huh. You want to say what I tell you to say. And I'm going to tell you, when that king offered him big <laughs> prize and told him to pray and to tell me what God said, and he said, this people is blessed of the Lord, and you cannot curse them. And he, said, he kept saying that, and the king got upset. 
But you know, little father, <coughs> when you read about Balaam, and that's just the reason why I know he never really got that out of his heart. Yes, he feared God enough to know that when God said, say what I say, he better say it because God told him that not to go with him unless he told him to, and he got up and went anyway. Yes, man. And he got in trouble. So now then, he's, he's learned. But has he learned? Is he just living in fear? I want to tell you, fear is not going to keep you saved. It's not going to keep you from sin. It's not going to keep you from missing God. It might one time keep you, but it's, you've got to find a place where you love God with all your heart and you're willing to obey God Amen. regardless. Amen. Yes. Because when the children of Israel went to another place, you know what the Bible said? The Bible said that the men went in to the women in that area and was commitment adultery, fornication. Because... Balaam had told the king and the people, this is how, if you get them to disobey God, then God won't bless them. Wow. You reckon how he knew that? Huh? Because he didn't have a little experience himself, had he? Yes. So Balaam hadn't changed. He needed deliverance. Yes. All right. Let's see which where I want to start at first here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. But deliver us from evil. That's what we call the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth, even as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Evil is a moral or spiritual. Either one. And evil being moral or spiritual is Satan with I did a lot of writing here and some of this I wrote almost on top of the other but with Satan as the author there, I got it. Right. Evil is a moral or spiritual. And it's something that has Satan as the author. Yes. The devil goes to and fro throughout the earth looking for who? that he can influence. Yes. Hebrews 2, 15, 18. Uh, let's see. I need to read that. Well, that other pulpit, this right here is, is uh, you, you, uh, how, how do you know how to 
fun things quick, you put markers in there. That's how. And then what happens in a situation like this, your markers fall out. So you can't find them quick anymore. <laughs> Hebrews 2. Yes. I did find it though. 2, 15 and 16. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to <coughs> bondage. Did you know that fear of death can put you in bondage? Yes. And Jesus is our deliverer. Yes, he is. He's not just our Savior. He's not just our healer. This is not a healing of your body. It's not a healing. This is deliverance. Yes. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Thank God he did more than make reconciliation. Yes. Galatians 1 and 4. Who gave himself for our sin that he might deliver us from this present evil world. There are things in this world that if you mess around with, you have to be delivered. They told me back in the late 70s, or late 60s, early 70s, LSD was such a powerful drug that one trip, take LSD one time and you're hooked. Now you've got to be delivered. That's the same thing with a person who becomes demon-possessed. One time, and you've got to be delivered. A person who is devil-possessed can't pray for forgiveness and be forgiven and be free. It just don't work. The devil won't let them. Because he becomes the master did you know that your Bible, my Bible says, we are servant to whoever we obey? That's right. If we obey the devil, then the devil becomes our master. Mm -hmm. If we obey God, then God becomes our master. Who do you want to be your master? Mm -hmm. The only thing is, when God is your master, he sets you free. Yes. When the devil is your master, he puts you in bondage. Yes, yeah. amen. amen. Yeah. Where you can't get loose, you can't get out. You can't get free. You can't do what you want to do. You're not your own anymore. Amen. Let me close. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I just want to make sure you understand that deliverance is not just a thing of the Old Testament. It's a thing of the New Testament. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly. Is that what we've been talking about? Yeah. Second Peter, chapter 2, yes. verse 9. Yes. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly. tell you. The Bible tells us that there is coming a time when Satan is going to be cast out of the air. Not going to be prince of the power of the air anymore. And he's going to be cast down to this world. And when he is and when he does, you talk about it. But we are going to have to know everything we do, everything we say, Everything we want, everything we don't want, we got to pray it all through. Because when the devil has come down to this world, if we happen to be here when he is, 
you can know that he has already been reading your mail for ever how many years old you are. He started reading your mail when you was in your mother's room. Oh, yes. You said, well, how am I going to make it? There's not but one way. That's it. I said, there's not but one way. Yeah. How am I going to make it? There's no hope for me. There's only one way. If there's one way, then there's hope. If yes. there's no way, you're in trouble. But there is one way. And his name is Jesus. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. He knows how to deliver. Yes. Yes, he the does. The godly. Yes. The righteous. Yes. He knows how to deliver. Yes. When Satan comes to take you in bondage. It's one thing for him to lie to you. It's one thing for him to cheat and tell you things that would be that are not. Or shouldn't be that is. That's one thing. But to try to put you in the bondage, and that's really what his goal is. His goal, the devil doesn't lie to us just because he likes to lie. He doesn't tell us things just because he doesn't have anything else to do. Are you listening to me? Yeah. His goal is to put you under his command. Right. If he can get you to do what he says for you to do, then he goes before the Father and says, Father, they're not your servant anymore, they're my servant because they did what I said to do. They deliberately put themselves <laughs> in my hands. Now they're my servant. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the Father knows how to deliver <laughs> the righteous. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stop right here. Praise you, Lord. Because there's, I, I don't know how much there is of this. Because. I felt like I had all I needed to do to try with this morning anyway. LSD. One shot. Some people, one drink. When alcohol is an iniquity in your family, I hope you understand that word iniquity. That's it. Not let me say it like this. If your daddy had a problem with drinking, yep. don't try to have a social sip. That's right. right. Because you'll wind up, bam! You'll need deliverance. That's right. mm -hmm. If your daddy chased the one don't take a chance. <coughs> Don't take a chance. Keep your eyes, have dull eyes. Keep your eyes on God only. Yes. Because if you're not careful, that iniquity will take over in your life. Yes. And then you will have to be delivered. Yes. yes. Would you stand with me this morning? There's no need to have any music singing. <laughs>